Thanks for checking out this episode of Brutal Battle Beer Break. And as you will recognize, something is different with this one. Um, it's the number of beers in front of me. Uh, typically, I just do one beer per Brutal Battle Beer Break. But this one's different and it's special, so it makes sense that I would do four at a time. So it's going to be longer. So strap yourself in. Anyway, this is the uh, a special pack of beer. It's a seasonal pack by Flying Dog Brewing out of Frederick, Maryland. And they put this out, I think they've put this out for the past three years in a row now, and it's their Otterbein pack. Now, Otterbein is a cookie company, which I believe is based out of Maryland, and they what they've done for these packs each year is they will pick a cookie from Otterbein and then create a beer that they think complements the cookie, or the cookie will complement the beer. We actually did a special um, episode of the actual podcast, just audio podcast, about the very first one that they did, so you can go back and listen to that. Just check out BrutalBattle.com or look for it on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. So, didn't do the one last year. Figured it'd be fun to just do this one as a Brutal Battle beer break and see what happens. So, should be good, should be cool, uh, and I'll tell you, you know, what they're supposed to be paired with. I'm not doing the cookies, sorry. Um, not a big cookie person, and I don't really want to... Uh, you know, commit to buying a ton of cookies for this, but uh, just going to evaluate these beers and see what's good. So this is kind of my own pack attack just for the video, which we do pack attacks for audio. But anyway, all right, so the first one here is, pop it and then, first one here is a raspberry leaf ale. Now this is a, uh, it's 6.5% alcohol by volume and it's an ale with grapefruit, raspberry tea, and other natural flavors added. So this one is supposed to pair with a lemon sugar cookie by Otterbein. So, I mean, honestly, I, I'll just show you the first one's label. They're all going to look basically the same except a different color and a different name on them. So just get a good look at that, and then I'm not going to show you the other ones. So um, Raspberry Leaf Ale. Uh, and the reason that I have you know, one, one little goblet for each of them is because I don't want to take the time to go and rinse in between. So this is just easier. Anyway, check it out. Uh, it actually looks like, um, you know, like a pale ale, honestly. It just looks like a orange with a little bit yellow tinge pale ale to it. It's got a lot of carbonation coming up from the bottom. Decent head around the top. I do smell, now it's probably because I know this, that it's like raspberry tea in there. It does smell a little earthy, a little leafy, a little tea-esque. I don't think I can actually get raspberry out of the smell. Um, I do get a little bit of that grapefruit aspect in there. It smells pretty malty though. There's a bit of like a honey sweetness in there as well. So I'm gonna try this. Super light. What's ABB on this again? 6.5. Yeah, it seems about 6.5. I can taste the raspberry tea in this, or what I would assume a raspberry tea would taste like. It's a very slight kind of raspberry flavor. Um, just kind of like, you know, hits your tongue lightly, uh, traces along the top of it. Uh, it definitely has that kind of leafy tea aspect as well. Yep, definitely get the grapefruit aspect in there too. That's like the second thing to come in. The first is that raspberry tea, and then it's the grapefruit. And then the finish is a little bit honey, a little bit of a hay aspect to it as well. I could see this going well with a sugar cookie. Is that what it is? A lemon sugar cookie. Oh yeah, I could see that because the lemon would enhance, enhance the citrusiness, uh, which the citrusiness isn't crazy. The grapefruit in this is more of like a grapefruit peel, so... Decent. I'm down with it. It's pretty decent. All right, so the next one I'm going to go to is a horchata lager. Now, this one pairs with their straight-up sugar cookie, uh, and it's brewed with cinnamon and vanilla bean. Okay, so that is like a brownish-orange coloration, maybe a little bit of a reddish hue in there as well. It's got a decent white head to it, decent amount of carbonation coming up from the bottom. Oh, 
smells pretty horchata-y. Um, so let me... Yeah, definitely smell the cinnamon. Definitely can smell some vanilla bean aspect in there. Oh yeah, and I taste it. Lots of cinnamon right up front, and then it goes right to that vanilla bean, malty, pretty, like, medium uh, mouthfeel to it. It's nice. This would, this would definitely be a good one for the winter season, and it, you know, spices, and that's the way that cinnamon and vanilla comes together. It just makes you think, you know, cookies. And with a sugar cookie, I can see how that's nice. Hmm. I respect that. That's a good. Uh, it doesn't even taste all that lagery in the in the finish either. Like there's typically a particular lager yeast flavor. Um, and I don't. I can't even really get that so much. It's just mainly the cinnamon and the vanilla bean, and it's kind of nice. It's not amazing, but it's good. Cool. So the next one. Uh, this is interesting. A Christmas IPA. And, oh, I'm sorry, the horchata lager is 6.8% alcohol. I didn't say that. So here's the Christmas IPA. Um, it's 7.6% alcohol by volume. It's an IPA with orange peel, spruce, and tangerine, which sounds quite good. Uh, and this is supposed to be paired with the orange white chocolate chip cookie. I didn't know they made anything like that. That's interesting. Let's pop this sucker right in there. All right, so here we have it. Looks like your typical IPA. It is very orangey. It's got a nice white head to it. Um, not as much uh, carbonation coming up from the bottom as the last two, but there's some. Oh yeah, very grapefruity. Very grapefruity. I can smell that tangerine. It's very, very, very citrusy. Now it says there's spruce in there. If I really reach for it in the smell, I can get the spruce at the end, but I'm probably only getting it because I know it's in there. And that spruce, I feel like, can sometimes come off as being, like, pine. So, it smells good, though. Mmm. I don't like that. I don't like the way the spruce plays in this beer. I, I really don't. Um, I get a quick hit of those really nice grapefruit and tangerine flavors. And there's a decent bitterness to it to back up those flavors. But then there's that spruce and it just tastes, it tastes like a tree. It tastes like spruce tips and sappy, you know. And um, it's not integrating well, to be honest. Uh, what I do really like that is this same type of idea is Dogfish Head's Pennsylvania Tuxedo. I think they did this type of beer a lot better. Um, I, I'm not a big, I'm not a fan. Too sprucey, too, a little too syrupy. Nah, I don't like it. It's not horrendous, but it, it, I don't like it. Not big on that, so let me get some water. And then the last one, oh, and that one was, uh, to remind you, was supposed to be with the orange white chocolate chip cookie. I, I can't imagine how that would go with it, to be honest. Um, okay, I guess. All right, then the last one is a Baltic Porter. Uh, I don't see enough Baltic Porters out there, and I quite like Baltic Porters. They have a little bit more of like a salinity. They're more robust style Porters, uh, and I like that. So this is 8.4% alcohol, and it pairs with their straight-up chocolate chip cookie. Uh, and it's brewed with star anise, which anyone out there not that familiar with anise, anise has a very licorice, like black licorice taste to it. All right, so it's a lighter-looking porter. It's not super dark. Um, so as you can see, I mean, it looks dark, much darker on the screen than it actually pours uh, in real life, but... I, I mean, I can see through it on the edges. It's like a reddish brown. Um, yeah, so I can see through a little bit on the edges. So, Let me smell. There's a little bit of a coffee, like roasty coffee note in there. 
There's a little bit of a salinity that I expect from a Baltic Porter. A little bit of a, uh, a jerky, like beef jerky type smell with some type of soy sauce aspect. <sighs> Smells decent. Can't really pick out any star anise, though. Or, I mean, anise, really. I don't know what the difference in flavor between regular anise and star anise is, so. It tastes like a thinner type of Baltic Porter. There's a bit of that salinity to it. There's a little bit of that beef jerky aspect. There's a roastiness to it. Um, sweetness on the end. Um, it's decent. I wouldn't say this is the best Baltic pour I've had. I wouldn't say it's the worst. It's kind of in the middle. It's okay. It's just okay. Okay. So, I, I could see maybe where this would go with a straight up chocolate chip cookie. Actually, I could see where it would go with a chocolate chip cookie because adding chocolate to that flavor would kind of round it out a little bit more. So, you know, this isn't the full experiment because I didn't have the cookies, but, you know, draw your own conclusions based on the flavors I gave you on how the cookies would go with it. Um, so overall, I mean, Christmas IPA did not work for me. Baltic Porter was, nah, okay. Uh, the Horchata Lager was good, um, solid, interesting. And the uh, Raspberry Leaf Ale was pretty, pretty nice, um, especially for like a lighter style with a little bit of a fruit aspect to it. So overall, decent pack. Um, would I go out and purchase any of these again? Probably not, uh, just because there's so many other beers out there and you really have to stand out for me to want to purchase you again. So sorry, Flying Dog. Um, Although I feel like I did shortchange you guys just a little bit because I didn't do the cookies with these. And the cookies could have enhanced the beer. And who knows, the beer most likely would have enhanced the cookies and, you know, whatever. But if people want to find out how that goes, uh, we like I said, we had done the original Otterbein Flying Dog Pack uh, on the regular podcast. So you can check that out. Uh, and that was, that was a fun time. Uh, just go to BrutalBattle.com uh, or check it on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. But anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. I know it's been much longer than it usually is. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have any ideas for any of these, send me an email at brewbattlepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, thank you so much, and go have yourself an awesome beer.